The next question, uh, I think, came from the audience, and I don't have a clue what it means, so uh, hopefully uh, the uh, panel here does. It says, why did Plain Township object to the TIF, TIF, affecting the venue? Does everybody understand the question? Is that did or why didn't? Did it? Uh, why, why didn't they object to the TIF affecting the venue? And I don't, I generally know what a TIF is. I'm not sure what the venue is. It's tax, 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 with respect to one, why we didn't object, one, as John alluded to earlier, some of the changes that need to be made in Columbus from a legislative aspect, that process right now legally doesn't give us a recognized vote or voice in it. We have absolutely communicated because of the relationships and the partnerships that we have at the county, at the county level with the commissioners and so forth, the importance of hey, fixing a drainage issue as well as how that affects that commercial area. But as well, tax increment financing essentially allows an entity to call back a portion of those pro property taxes that should be going to potential other causes. So, you know, what we can do is, again, we've said earlier, we'll lobby the legislature to help get some of those language changes so we do have a voice in it because Quite frankly, the only real entities that got a voice and a vote to push back through notification is the school district. So regardless of whether it's myself or any of the current board or any future board members, until there's a change within the language, we can speak as loud as we want, as frequent as we want. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, the entities that approve, approve that and sign off on it, they can listen to us. They don't have to listen to us, but you know, per process, you don't have it. So again, that's where the relationships I have through the legislature and being vice president of Star County Township Association will help us in those lobbying efforts. Thank you, Mr. Rich. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't have specific knowledge on why Plain Township didn't object to the current TIF on the venue. Uh, I'm not on the board currently, uh, but I have looked into the TIF on the venue uh, a lot. You know, it's over four hundred thousand dollars of my taxpayer money that I, you know, approved as as a tax or as a uh, you know, a voter, you know, to go towards fire, police, and uh, road services. And it's it was concerning to me the more I did research on it that Jackson Township, you know, the, the county was actually planning to tip outside of just that area, and Jackson Township, City of Canton, North Kansas City Schools, they all objected to the tip. Uh, Plain Township, from what I was told, did not. Uh, so that involved, you know, this this tax incremental financing uh, affecting the venue there, you know, for for a drainage issue that ultimately is on Stark County, you know, the Stark County Commissioners to fix, and it's not a, you know, this isn't why we passed fire, police, and road levies. It wasn't to fix a drainage issue. Although I do very much believe that there are drainage issues in Plain Township that need fixed, and that we need to do that. But this wasn't the way. This wasn't the way to do it. Now, TIFs and tax abatements, that, that type of thing, you know, those can be beneficial to townships, but they just need to be worked together with other economic agreements you know, to make them beneficial to both the businesses and the townships, and that wasn't done in this case. Thank you, sir. Ms. Harlan? Uh, yes, I, as long as I know from what I've read and from the trustee meetings that I've attended, I don't know why we did not uh, benefit from the venue as much as I would have liked. I know that it is costing uh, Plain Township $480,000 over the next 10 years, and that is concerning to me, uh, especially because I, from what I've read, Jackson Township is actually getting 1% back. And we, from the city, and that offsets new levies. I'm worried that we might have to have yet another new levy and our property taxes will go up. Concerning for me is because I am on a budget. I live paycheck to paycheck, as most people, um, I believe, in the township do, especially if we have a variety of older, you know, elderly people who live on a budget or on Social Security. We cannot and they cannot afford for us to have any increase in property taxes. So it would be nice to know all the details of what happened with that, with the venue and the tests, but I don't think that's as far as I know as what I know about that. Thank you, ma'am. John Sable? Uh, for us to be able to object or appeal, we first of all have to know that it's even going to happen. And the way the current law is written, the only political subdivision that has to, by law, be contacted is the school district. So we were not contacted to indicate that a TIF was even going to be 
voted on, at least from my perspective. Uh, once we found that out, I started asking questions regarding why weren't we even officially notified that the school district could be notified that there is a TIF going on at this level. Why weren't we notified? And it was because it, they are not required by law to do that. So one of the things we immediately got hold of our state reps and said, look, if, if, if for future purposes, you need to look at this law and put some language in this law that would contact all the tax collecting entities. Because not only did we get affected by that tip, but their own tax collection uh, levies got affected by that tip. So they literally took money from themselves to create this tip. So it makes, I agree, that absolutely makes no sense at all. But it didn't just affect Plain Township levies. So, uh, you know, if I, if I seem a little hot under the collar about that particular issue, it's because I am. Thank you, sir. Next question.